Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's. Today's Mass celebrates the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our celebrant this morning will be Father Kevin. We ask that you please turn off all cell phones and any electronic devices during the Mass, and please stand and join us in our opening hymn, number 491, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 491. Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. This morning we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and this Mass is being offered for Corinne Fleming. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. See the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord said to me, spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revol revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom 
I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints. For the sake of Christ, for when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astonished. They said where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom had been given him? 
What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he's not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In an episode of Britain's Got Talent back in 2009, a middle-aged woman made her way to the stage and said she wanted to sing like one of Britain's most acclaimed stars of the musical theater, Elaine Page. At that, the judges for the contest barely concealed their amusement. The audience was whispering their doubts and criticisms. How could this frumpy and attractive woman present herself this way? Then amid snickers from the audience, Susan Boyle began to sing, I Dreamed a Dream from Les Miserables. In that instant, skepticism changed to astonishment as Susan Boyle's beautiful voice delivered note after note that shocked the audience. The shocked audience stood and applauded. Boyle had been judged unfairly by those who assumed they knew what to expect from her. A British columnist called Boyle's story a modern parable and a rebuke to the human tendency to judge others based on physical appearances, making presuppositions, presuppositions about who they truly are. Unfortunately, these tendencies continue to divide us. When we are familiar with another person, we tend to think we know all about them. As a consequence, we're not open to growth or surprises or new discoveries. The lack of genuine acceptance places a barrier between us and the other person, and sometimes that barrier has to come against a big shock before it can be removed. Such was the shock that was delivered by to Boyle's judges and audience. But the tendency to judge others unfairly is not a new phenomenon. As we see in today's gospel, Jesus' hometown friends and neighbors were sure they knew him. When someone is familiar, we assume that we know them and we are too often unwilling to let them be greater than our opinion of them. Jesus has been known in Nazareth and the surrounding area as an ordinary person. His life was unremarkable. There is nothing written in any reliable source about his years from age 12 to 30. They've heard reports of his recent teaching and healing in other towns, but weren't they neighbors with his family the people perceived Jesus as an unschooled carpenter and the son of Mary. Clearly, onlookers could hardly accept that this man who appears all too common and ordinary could teach them anything about the meaning of Scripture, which communicates God's will to the people, and so they took offense at him. The idea that a carpenter, Jesus, could be inaugurated in the kingdom of God was scandalous and their attachment to their preconceived ideas became an obstacle of faith. In a short time, Jesus had become an itinerant preacher, healer, and prophet of sorts. They found him too much for them. They rejected him and did not have an ear for his message. Don't we have a tendency to dismiss insights, advice, and spiritual counsel quite easily because it comes from a family member, coworker, or someone we personally know? I have a personal experience to share with you that took place in the seminary, a setting where 60 some old men lived in community. Can you say cabin fever? Living in community together for nine plus months? There are two seminarians that had quirky habits that would bother me, not enough that I would share them with others in the community. The first seminary who wore loafers would shuffle along continuously Mickey, making a clippity clop sound that I found irritating, especially when he would enter the chapel for morning and evening prayer. The second seminarian's quirky habits also took place in the chapel at the conclusion of morning prayer. Just before going to breakfast, I would remain behind to pray the office of the readings. 
The seminarian, who I could see out of the corner of my eye in the chapel, was continually flipping index cards. I found it distracting, and I would become bothered by this action. I would then slightly turn my seat so that I would not, I would no longer be seeing him forever turning the index cards, which would then allow me to focus on my prayers. It was after the death of my father that these two seminarian brothers came to me and were exceptionally caring and supportive during my father's wake, funeral mass, and burial. In fact, the second seminarian from the chapel came to me and told me that he was remembering my father every day at community prayer. It was at that moment that I realized that my father's name had been added to the index cards of people this seminarian would remember and pray for in the chapel. I was ashamed that I let what I perceived to be quirky habits bother me and prevent me from truly knowing these two seminarians. It was an invaluable lesson for me to learn. Those that think they know it all cannot be disciples. They cannot be taught. They refuse to follow. Just as in today's first reading, the book of Isaiah, uh, rather the prophet Ezekiel, where the Lord said, Ezekiel, I am sending you to the Israelites who have a hard face and obstinate heart. Very similar to what happened, Jesus preaching in the temple, in the synagogue in Nazareth. Speaking of being taught, there's an old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, my money is on being able to teach an old dog new tricks than teaching a human who has a hardened heart anything. But with a gentle and humble heart, we realize that we don't have all the answers. It is then we realize and admit that there is indeed something we might learn. Then we can become ready and willing disciples. We rely on God's graces, then we become strong. We rely on God's, on Christ's spirit. We can open our hearts and ears and be receptive to anyone who brings God's message to our lives today. Two things cause as strong a human reaction in Jesus as a lack of faith or conversely, great faith. Faith is his door into human hearts, but it can only be opened from within. So we have to ask ourselves, what opportunities have we missed out on because we've closed our door to those who we have encountered in our lives. Failing to open our hearts and our ears to those who could bring God's message into our life today and in the future. How sad it was that Susan Boyle had to wait such a long time to realize her dream because no one had previously given her the opportunity, an opportunity that finally came and that those who have heard her sing are better off having heard her beautiful voice, Susan Boyle's gift from God. Please stand for our prayers and petitions. But before that, our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He was suffered in death and buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's bring our petitions for the church and for the world before the Lord. For priests and deacons, may the Lord renew them in their vocation to proclaim the gospel with charity and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in the world who do not have faith in Christ, may the Holy Spirit open their hearts to his invitation into communion with him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who care for a loved one who is elderly or infirm, may our Savior strengthen and comfort them when their burden is heavy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may God in his mercy joyfully receive them into his heavenly banquet especially members of our Mass Intention Guild and all our beloved deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Anthony Patriaca, for whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts, For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Corinne Fleming, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and eternal Father, we ask that you hear our prayers and answer our petitions in accordance with your divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 499, All That Is Hidden, number 499. If you would follow me, follow where life will lead. Do not look for me among the dead, for I am hidden in pain, risen in love. There is no harvest without sowing of grain. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. If you would honor me, honor the least of these. You will not find me dressed in finery. My word cries out to be heard, breaks through the world. My word is on your lips and lives in your heart. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. If you would speak of me, live all your life in me. My ways are not the ways that you would choose. My thoughts are far beyond yours, as heaven from earth. If you believe in me, my voice will be heard. All that is hidden, will be made clear all that is dark now will be revealed what you have heard in the dark proclaim in the light what you hear in whispers proclaim from the house tops Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for your hands. 
the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was said that he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servant, Corinne Fleming, 
whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with the Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Mary and all the saints who will please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To Lewis, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity accords with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. communion hymn is number 325, Bread for the World, number 325. May we who dream 
Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life, broken to reach and heal the wounds of human pain. Where we divide you are Your feet with endless care. Bread for the world, a world of hunger. Wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink pour out our love. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the wine of peace, poured into hearts once broken and where dryness sleeps. Where we are tired and weary, you are waiting there to be the way which beckons us beyond despair. is number 201, Beautiful Savior, number 201. Oh 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. Please call the rectory to register any incoming first graders for religious education. The Knights of Columbus is hosting a blood drive next Saturday, July 13th. Please see the bulletin for all details. Unfortunately, because of the fact that this month there is no Dunkin' Donuts or there are no donuts and coffee this morning because of the 4th of July weekend, but I know you all came to see me, right? <laughs> Maybe not. Um, so please join us next month on August 4th. I want to wish everybody a wonderful and blessed tail end of the 4th of July weekend. I'll be taking an informal survey at the back. I, I did a survey before 4th of July for uh, the kind of grilled items that you grill for the 4th of July, but now the more important one is to check now what kind of dessert do you pair that with? So I'll be interested to find out so that, because I have to go shopping in a short, in a little bit and uh, might pique my interest as far as some of those desserts is concerned. But again, I want to wish everybody a blessed remainder of the 4th of July weekend and please be safe in your travels. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Our recessional hymn is number 582, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, number 582. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He's trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, sentence by the demon flare